Hello everyone, my name is Lila Latipova and I'm one of the organizers uh, of International Forum on Teacher Education that is annually held in Kazan. Unfortunately, this year we are not able to host you here in the beautiful city of Kazan, but we are convinced that we shouldn't stand still and we must continue addressing the most relevant issues modern teacher education is challenged with. In order to better understand how we should progress in the current situation and what we should do during and after the coronavirus pandemic, we initiated a survey of international experts, our friends, so that they could give you the latest updates on what is going on in different countries at the moment. The experts were given two questions to consider. First, what challenges did teachers, students and parents encounter in the context of transition to distance learning? And second, especially urgent and relevant to us, what lessons should teacher education learn and how should we reshape our teacher training programs so that future teachers become resilient and adaptable uh, and navigate efficiently in the changing global environment? Our international experts represent a wide variety of countries and uh, uh, we are very thankful to them for their kind response and support of our initiative. And now I would like to give the floor to them. Okay, well that, that's actually a very good question. Um, I think our experience as teachers, as pupils and as parents um, of the quarantine has been very, very different, but that it all comes from the same starting point. We have all lost our certainties. We've lost the stuff that we're used to. We're, we've lost the reference points that we've had in terms of days. So for teachers, I think three things in particular um, are, are affected. Firstly, they have a sense of loss of space. They don't have their classrooms. There's no way of organizing learning in the way that they've been used to. There's no um, managing of pupil movement. There's no distribution of workbooks, etc., etc. So all of that is gone. The second thing that has changed is they've lost the sense of time. Um, classes are no longer 45 minutes or one hour. They're elastic. They stretch. They're synchronous. They're asynchronous. There's contact online. There's Zoom seminars there's worksheets, there's email. So it's a very, very different experience. But I think what has been mostly affected for teachers is the way that they interact with students, with pupils. They do not have the ability to read the mood of a class any longer. You, it's not the same when you're looking at a Zoom video as looking at 20 or 30 faces in a classroom. Um, how do you judge progress? How do you judge who is learning? How do you judge who is actually working? All of that is, is very, very difficult in the new environment because the visual cues, the pedagogical cues that teachers are used to are all gone. Now, I think pupils are affected also, um, but in a, a, a different way. They are mostly affected by the loss of the normal. They don't have school. They don't have the ordinary day-to-day -day story of getting up, going to school, meeting their friends and so on. Um, so all of that is gone. Classes, homework, um, examination preparation, that's all changed. They're now doing online lessons if they're doing anything. Um, they're doing work on email. So it is all technology mediated in a way that it was never previously. But I think what, what really, really affects pupils the most is the loss of the social side. They do not have the contacts that they would have had with their friends. And that's a very important thing for a young person. They don't have the social setting. They don't have the company of others of their own age, their peers, and so on. That's very, very difficult. That's a real problem for, for pupils, students, in my view. Parents, I think, are suffering from shock. I think it's very much the shock of the new. Um, their work lives have been disrupted completely. If they're working at all, they're trying to work from home, which is very difficult um, for most people, particularly if you've not done this before. Um, they're also trying to homeschool in many cases. So in the past, they would have worked with the informal side of education. Now they're trying to deal with the formal aspects of educating their children as well. 
And that is a very, very big challenge and a very profound shock to most parents. Being with your kids day in, day out is a new experience for many of us. Um, I think though, I, I would say, that, uh, just to finish, I would say one, one thing in particular. This is not about a new normal. We are living in quite extraordinary times. They are bizarre, they are surreal in so many ways. And I think what we need to remember is that they are with us for now. This is not forever. So the problems that we're facing will, sooner or later, hopefully sooner, uh, start to disappear as we return to something like real lives, in real schools, real teachers working with real students. I think we have to think very carefully um, about what's happened to our courses in the past couple of months. We need to look and we need to learn a lot from that very rapid transition that most of us have made from um, real life face-to-face -face teaching to the more virtual environment. There's a lot that we can take from our experience. There's a lot we can take also from the experience of others. So I think it's very important that teacher educators talk one with another to see how different institutions um, manage to deal with the challenges that emerged when we moved all of our major work to the online, to the virtual spaces. Um, the most important thing is that we need to get a sense of what teacher educators need to know and be able to do in order to better navigate the more blended type of world that we're currently facing into. The world where not all of our teaching can be presumed to be face-to-face, -face, um, certainly not um, in, in, the, in the mid to, to, to longer term. Um, for our students, I think it means focusing on preparing them more for mixed work. Most of our student teachers um, will have had some experience, obviously, of the lockdown as well. They would have probably been studying through it. And what we can do and what we need to do is to learn from that experience and help them push so that they see things from the other side. So they see things from the teaching side of that experience rather than the studying side. Um, and that will involve focusing on skills and capabilities that we don't perhaps focus on enough in most of our courses. I'm thinking of things like designing for learning, uh, teaching and assessing in blended and online spaces, and particularly th that last part, the assessing part, because that is where we all have had huge amounts of difficulty. So I think future teacher education has to focus on finding some kinds of solutions in those spaces. Most importantly, I think we have to accept that school experiences for our students are also going to be different. They will not be going back into the type of teaching placement or teaching practice that they would have had previously. The schools they go back to will be slightly different at the very minimum. Some will be very radically different. So we need to help prepare our students for that experience. We need to help them navigate, make their way through that experience more effectively. Um, their university courses will also change and it's probably that part that we can deal with most easily. We can change our modules, we can uh, adapt our modules so that they have a focus that is consistently on the two ways, the online, virtual and the face-to-face. -face. And I think by doing that we we'll make it uh, possible for our student teachers to have a much, much richer experience. And that way I think we will all learn from and hopefully um, meet some of the challenges that the problems associated with this quarantine time have actually raised for all of us right across um, the world in relation to teachers and teacher education. Closing schools and universities has displaced teaching from the classroom to computers, laptops and other devices at home. Online teaching is the only possible approach to education nowadays in Spain. The COVID-19 has brought about heavy loads of work to teachers as well as new responsibilities. It has also opened uncertain scenarios with no backup plans for online teaching 
resulting in particular challenges to teachers' professional skills. Some schools and teachers have not yet adapted quickly to the situation, but the majority of them has well transitioned from traditional classroom teaching to online active methodologies. As for pupils, the foremost impact is the real risk of regression for children whose basic or fundamental learning is not strong, especially for those with learning needs, disabilities or immigrants. It has been proved that learning is stronger in face-to-face -face teaching than online, mainly because many students require individual support and curriculum flexibility. Secondly, the economic situation of rich families is affecting a student's school performance. Difficulties to stay on tax, less study time, inability to focus. Spanish researchers, uh, researcher Reed Valenzuela has published a paper this year, very interesting one, in the Journal of Labor Economics, that demonstrates that the students whose parents have a permanent job, in contrast to those with temporary works, have 7.6% more probabilities to achieve better results in mathematics and 7.8 more percent more probabilities to graduate at the end of their studies. Finally, regarding uh, parents in Spain, many challenges are being faced. New computers and other devices have been purchased or reutilized the old ones to meet the individual uses at home for each family member. Secondly, Many parents are learning about ICT on the fly. For instance, video conferencing, uh, handling of uh, software, tax submission online, because they are now assuming the role of the teacher. Thirdly, combining housework with parental duties and teleworking is starting to threaten work-life balance. In conclusion, the COVID-19 has put all of the teachers to the test and now, now is the time to reinvent ourselves. Well, from my point of view, the lessons learned might be summarized in these five. First, we have experienced that teachers' digitalization is key to quality education. Teachers have widely assumed in Spain the need to make an effective transition to online teaching. It is interesting to note, for instance, how senior teachers in our country have been taught by juniors to make a more efficient use of the online tools. Second, no student should be left behind. Access to online learning must be granted to all students to ensure they retain knowledge and skills through distance learning programs and online platforms. Teachers should catch up with transitional students who have been disconnected from the online teaching or have fallen behind to rejoin the level of schooling and competency. Third, there is a need for a holistic contingency plan to teach online in every school and university. The education system in Spain is working towards setting up contingency plans to mitigate risks and grant teaching with quality guarantees for future lockdowns or other exceptional circumstances. Four, we need to provide and deploy funding to respond quickly to education needs during the COVID-19 pandemic and its aftermath. This means to ensure equal opportunities for learning, attending the most vulnerable students and setting cost-effective responses. Five, and last, collaboration. Collaboration is required more than ever. Cooperation between teachers, educational jurisdictions, families and civil society has surfaced during the pandemic, stressing its fundamental role. In sum, the extended use of online teaching tools has been a wonderful opportunity to explore their potential at all educational levels. To date, it is still relegated to a subsidiary position against face-to-face -face teaching in most of the schools. But after the pandemic, it might gain momentum, the online teaching might gain momentum and strengthen its presence in all educational institutions.
Hello everybody, dear colleagues, first of all, I want to congratulate and wish you for a successful conference. I think IFTE conference is a precious opportunity to reflect and exchange best practices in teacher training. In my country, in Italy, the COVID has appended the lives of children and their families and many people died after contracting the coronavirus. In reference to the first question, what problems did the teachers, pupils and parents face in my country during COVID-19 quarantine? Well, the biggest challenge faced by the school has been to rethink and reinvent itself. In fact, the school had to find adequate technological resources and tools in a very short time to reach as many pupils as possible. It tasked the teachers to get involved by reorganizing the way of teaching. Families found themselves sharing their children's school time in full and often had to mediate. After an initial moment of euphoria due to the novelty, pupils found being nostalgic and felt the desire to return to the classroom. Their biggest problem is to not live in their daily life with their classmates. In reference to the second question, what lessons should the teacher education system in my country learn from this situation? Educational system should aim to have an efficient teacher training. In this period of emergency, many teachers have been seen refusing to operate in distance learning as not competent in the use of technologies. It turned out that many schools had no current technology project because teachers usually consider them an extra. Above all, the lesson the system may have learned from the pandemic is that it is not possible to economize with schools. The educational system shall aim to make teachers competent with suitable courses in order to make them skilled and prepared even in a period like the one we are living, a period of teaching emergency. Well, looking forward to see you with the hope that this difficult period will pass soon. This is my message. An affectionate greeting to you, Rosa, and the entire equipe of IFTE. Bye. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Ian Mentor here. Um, greetings to all IFTE delegates from England. It's a great disappointment not to be actually there in the flesh meeting you. And I know we'll miss all the social and cultural aspects of the conference that we usually enjoy so much. I'd like to thank uh, Ida and Rosa for organising this virtual get-together. I think it should be very interesting. I'm only going to talk about what's been happening in England, really, rather than the whole of the UK. And I'm only able to, of course, flag up a few headlines in the short time available. Question one was what problems do teachers, pupils and parents face during the quarantine? Schools across England were closed on the 20th of March. Nevertheless, a small number of children are still attending. Children who are judged to be vulnerable, including those categorised as at risk by social services, and children of key workers, for example, those working in the National Health Service. There's been concern about the differential impact of school closures on families. About 1.3 million pupils are entitled to free school meals each day, and the government has said it would issue food vouchers to enable them to get some alternative supplies, but this doesn't seem to have been entirely successful and some children may be going hungry. There's also concern that the impact on children's progress will vary according to the skill and experience of parents or carers in offering children educational support during the lockdown. Most children are working on educational resources that have been sent home by schools on websites of various sorts. The effectiveness of this across the country is not being systematically monitored or evaluated so far as I'm aware. There are likely to be some households that don't have access to the necessary equipment to get the resources. Handheld devices are not adequate for this purpose. 
all public examinations have been cancelled uh, that were due to take place during the next few weeks. And alternative arrangements for assessing children are being put in place. The second question about teacher education, what can we learn from this situation? Well, there's been considerable consternation and anxiety in initial teacher education as the impact of the pandemic accelerated. Many student teachers were in school on their practicum. And as the lockdown was confirmed and schools were largely closed, the government acknowledged it would not be possible for all students to meet the school attendance requirements. And so ITE providers were given the responsibility of using their current judgments on the extent to which trainees were meeting the standards as the basis for deciding whether a qualification could be awarded. And so to finish, what are some of the lessons for teacher education to learn from this? Well, I've got five points. One, there's a need for much more scenario planning by regulatory authorities and providers to prepare for unexpected events. Two, the need, there is a great need for responsive and rapid communication systems between providers, schools and trainees and students to minimise confusion, anxiety panic. Three, a review of the teacher education curriculum to ensure that the health and safety implications of infectious diseases are understood by teachers in training. Four, the importance of virtual learning environments and ensuring access to appropriate technology, especially to the most disadvantaged young people student teachers as well as school students. And finally, consideration should be given as a house to support the ongoing professional development of newly qualified teachers who may have missed out. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Marta kowalczuk Balendziak, and I represent the Faculty of Education of the University of Białystok, Poland. May is a wonderful month in Poland. Usually at this time of year, Polish pupils play in the playground in close contact with their peers and secondary school students write mature exams in busy exam halls. Usually at this time of year, I have classes with my students who try to convince me that learning statistics is not so useful for the future career. Yeah, but all this was in the recent past. A microscopic virus from Wuhan has changed the realities of schools, teachers, pupils and parents in Poland. And although it seems that here in Poland we knew a lot about online teaching, after a few days of pandemic, it turned out that e-learning is much more than sending emails to students. The results of my observations, discussions with teachers and parents, as well as preliminary studies carried out in Poland, have indicated the following problems that teachers, students and parents face during the pandemic. First of all, a lack of computing equipment. Some families in Poland have three children and only one computer. Then, teachers' understanding of online teaching being too narrow. I mean here only sending materials from textbooks out via email. The need for parents to spend too many hours helping their children to learn. Then, students being overworked and the lack of ability to plan their own learning as well as a lack of knowledge of different learning methods. But above all, the most important problem is the lack of social relationships with their peers. When you ask me what lessons should the teacher education system in Poland learn from this situation, I want to say that, in my opinion, we need to rethink what it means to be a teacher in the 21st century and what competencies are particularly useful for teachers now. Lessons from COVID-19 seem to show us that we should continue our efforts in, firstly, preparing teachers to not only teach digitally, but also learn digitally for their own professional development. 
increasing awareness of the powerful value of relationships between teachers and parents, as well as other school stakeholders, for example, representatives of health services and policy makers. Firmly encouraging future teachers to be lifelong learners and develop skills such as creativity, innovativeness and flexibility in adapting to new circumstances. However, finally, now, the most important thing for me as a teacher educator is to increase my students' understanding that the core of the teaching profession is not just about the transfer of knowledge, but being a coach, a mentor for pupils, providing them with emotional support and caring about their well-being and happiness. To finish, I have a special message for the attendees of the 6th International Forum of Teacher Education in Kazan. Dear colleagues, since 2015, researchers from all over the world have met in Kazan to discuss urgent problems for teacher education. The organizers of this forum have invited us to Kazan again in this year to continue this discussion, but in a virtual form. I truly believe that this forum, even if this rather different format, will be a wonderful event for participants across the world, not only in scientific terms, but also in terms of building international solidarity. Here's to a fruitful meeting, and I hope that we will be able to address how technology can help us to live in times of change, choice and challenge. Everybody. COVID-19. It was an unexpected situation, I think, for everybody, for teachers, for uh, employees, for uh, kids, uh, for medical staff. Uh, and no one, I think, was prepared for this situation. Neither were teachers. Uh, the most difficult situation was at the beginning. Uh, because uh, teachers didn't know platforms which they could use for teaching. Uh, they were unable to estimate how much homework to, uh, to give learners. And uh, many times uh, they were giving learners too many homework. Uh, they were asking them uh, to record videos and uh, not only learners but also parents were under stress and i'm not teach uh, i'm not saying uh, about uh, those who don't have uh, enough technology at home who don't have access to internet uh, uh, kids from some distant uh, deprived econ uh, economically uh, deprived uh, areas uh, teacher uh, Teachers were also nervous uh, that they couldn't use uh, the electronic web page, edu page, uh, and uh, many times uh, also learners uh, were unable to orient in, in that web page and find all the tasks they were expected to do at home. Uh, this was uh, period of first two weeks, but step by step, uh, everybody learned what to do and how to do. And uh, also school started to uh, solve uh, existing problems with the help of uh, parents uh, more flexibly and to satisfaction of all, uh, all the involved in the, situ in the situation. Uh, now, uh, now the problem is also how to assess and evaluate learners. Uh, the Ministry of Education in Slovakia asked teachers to assess learners only verbally, not in grades. And some teachers have also problems with verbal grading of learners. Uh, teachers um, 
are not used to this type of grading and uh, that's why this is uh, quite uh, quite a problem. Uh, the other problem was also in families uh, where they have more than one uh, kid uh, because teachers were teaching the whole morning and if a family has three or four kids they didn't have enough uh, computers or uh, tablets uh, uh, to uh, to be used, and uh, in some uh, villages, for example, uh, if learners didn't have uh, technology at all, so teachers were coming to families and bringing homeworks to kids. So, variety of problems, and uh, what are uh, what are the consequences and what are the lessons we have learned. Uh, we have learned that uh, teachers uh, have to be psychologically prepared for such situations, uh, that they have to be flexible, creative and uh, they could judge in common sense what is possible and what is impossible for learners to do, uh, how they should be instructed in a more uh, learner-friendly uh, way to succeed and to learn what they are expected to learn. Good morning, this is Cheryl Craig speaking from near Houston, Texas. Uh, Texas Houston is the fourth uh, largest city in the United States. And right now it is bright red with, with, with respect to the coronavirus situation. I would like to speak with you about the, um, the, what we're learning from the coronavirus situation as it relates to schools. And so the first point I'd like to make is that the school is a hub of activity for society and all that the school offers is, is, is very brilliantly coming to light. Um, the fact that the schools uh, address the whole child, the, the, the fact that the schools supply food for children, the fact that they supply medical supplies, police supplies, pr police, pr pr every kind of, of form of protection for children, mentors, artists, uh, counselors, all of these things that are provided through the schools um, even to the point that principals and teachers are, are um, they play the role of absentee parents. All of this is coming out and the, and the respect for the, the load that society puts on the schools to provide for children is really coming to light. The second thing that is coming to light is the digital divide. And that digital divide is, is even if we have everything ready for the children, and I will speak to the teachers later, but if we have, are able to get to the children with the, the, the lectures or the, the activities or what they need to do for their work, we, we can't assume that every, every child has access to the technology. And this most certainly has come to light. And schools have stepped up once again, brought, bought new computers for many, many students, but also have bought bandwidth around their schools so that families can come and sit in the parking lot and they can do, the children can do their work. And uh, it's sort of like a Starbucks situation. The school has kind of, have, uh, is now a place if you're near a school, you probably have access to good bandwidth in order to use, get on the internet to do your work. And so that's the second thing that's, that's come to mind. The third thing that comes to mind is the respect for teachers and the respect for principals actually the respect for all frontline workers, uh, but, but, all, but all these people who have been working very hard in the, in the background, um, supporting families, supporting society, and supporting children to, to, to shepherd them into higher education and other job possibilities and to better lives, all of a sudden all this work that has happened behind the scenes is now coming forth and people are seeing it. So some of the things that we're seeing here is our um, you know, displays on principals and teachers' lawns. Um, there have been all sorts of car parades where uh, people come and uh, they come with their children hanging out of the cars with 
posters saying it saying thank you principal so and so uh thank you thank you teacher so and so and and just respect and the love for these people are is is just flowing and uh i think after this um that uh, people will be thinking so much uh, more with a great deal more of respect for for teachers and principals i just wanted to just add one facebook thing i saw was a parent who went on facebook and said I, I'd rather put burning embers, embers out of, under my fingernails than to teach my my child math. And uh, so this is sort of like this this parent is understanding that the difficulties in uh, teaching their child is one issue, but you consider if you've got 27 or 28 in the classroom and you're teaching that subject matter to all the children at the, at the same time, you could see where the how that could be compounded and it and the fact that someone could teach. Uh, multiples of, ch of their own children at the same time uh, does garner a lot of respect. And the last thing I would like to share is, is just the sheer adaptability of people. The first thing that struck me was, was, was that um, the, the people found ways to get everything online very quickly, almost overnight. And actually many people uh, uh, are doing extremely well with it, not all, but are, they're learning along the way. And, but I wanted to share with you one lesson that uh, I observed as a researcher, and uh, it just sort of showed uh, about how the teacher sensitively um, responded to the situation. The class began with, a, with an opener. The opener was, would you rather be with a bear or with be a shark? Which generated a lot of conversation amongst the children. Got them pretty excited, built up a lot of community. And then the, ch the teacher approached the children with a more serious question. Would you rather live in the future or would you rather live in the past? Oh my goodness. The marker point of the coronavirus. Would you like to live before this thing happened or would you like aftermath and how we might live differently? And this amazing conversation took place. Then the class went on and then it ended and I thought it was ended just as beautifully it started. It ended with five minutes of yoga where everybody just calmed down breathe in, breathe out, and then moved on to their next class. So I thank you for sharing with you these four points from the United States. The first one, the school is a hub of society and uh, providing for the whole child. The second one, the digital divide. The third one is respect for, for teachers and principals that has been welling up and spilling over. And of course, the fourth one, the adaptability of both teachers and students in dealing with the coronavirus situation. Thank you for allowing me to share this from Houston, Texas. Hello everyone. My name is Rosa Valeva. I'm a professor of Kazan Federal University head of the Pedagogy Department, Institute of Psychology and Education. And I'm very glad to answer the questions that my colleagues all over the world answered. According to the consequences of COVID-19 quarantine for education. So the first question was, what problems did the teachers, students and parents face in Russia during quarantine. Total digitalization of education on all levels has become a real challenge for teachers, students and parents in Russia during COVID-19 quarantine. I should say that we have been participating in a kind of experiment, not previously intended, planned for the full transition to distance learning for the whole country and all levels of education. And uh, this experiment has been ongoing for more than two months. During this time, it became clear to everyone that this transition is not as simple as originally intended. To tell the truth, the current situation has shown that the education system of Russia has been generally quite mobile to function 
uh, and develop in the context of its uh, universal transition to a new format of distance education. At the same time, it revealed its pain points. And first of all, these are issues of teachers and students' uh, readiness, I should say unreadiness, to interact effectively in the conditions of distance format contact for mastering educational programs. School students, as well as university students, spend much time in front of the computer. They don't have opportunity of having a rest outside because of quarantine. And this is not good for their health. As for parents, they discovered the real difficulties of teachers' profession. They are unable to have their children, especially if there are several children in family and they have only one computer. Teachers at the same time were not ready to a distant work. They repeated the way they work at school. They give much homework and the students have to spend the whole day long at the computer. And this is also not good for their house. All this situation was a real challenge for the teacher education as well. And the teacher education in Russia has to gain some lessons from this situation. <clears throat> the issues of digital competence of the future teacher, the problems of assessing the quality of the preparation for work in digital school, the development of creativity, the convergence of content and training technologies, and a number of other problems were very urgent problems during these two months. They are determining the need to, do, to develop innovative approaches and advanced learning technologies in teacher education. So, the teacher education curriculum should include a great deal of lectures and practice, special modules on digital technologies. But, to my mind, it is the simplest way of answering to the challenges of distant learning and teaching. The modern digital environment offers great opportunities that require the, its users to be educated in cybersecurity and individual responsibility. It is the pedagogical support of the digital transformation of society that will allow avoiding the deformation of human identity and minimizing the processes of dehumanization and instrumentalization of education. Teachers should be prepared for the timely overcoming of the negative consequences and risks of the transformation of human relations and values of the digital generation. Change of priorities, scale and intensification of changes in the education system require the development of theoretical, methodological, technological aspects of teacher training for the new digital school, taking into account world experience based on the priority of universal values while preserving the unique sociocultural code of the nation. So these are my answers to both two questions that were asked my colleagues all over the world. And turning to the Six Forum on Teacher Education that uh, is held in Kazan Federal University. I want uh, to greet all the participants of this forum. It is unfortunately held in a virtual way, in a virtual format. And that's why we can't meet face to face hug each other, talk to each other, 
and uh, walk in the streets of Kazan. But we have the opportunity of listening to the keynote lectures, to all the sessions that uh, will be organized uh, using Microsoft Teams platform. I greet all of you and I wish all of you luck, happiness, and all the very best. Thank you. Hello, dear friends and colleagues. My name is Professor Marjorie McMahon, and I am the head of the School of Education at the University of Glasgow in Scotland. And I'd like to share with you some of our recent experiences in responding to the coronavirus pandemic. In Scotland, schools closed several weeks ago. And part of the challenge with that was in the speed of the closure and also ensuring that pupils and parents and their families all felt supported in being able to continue homeschooling or learning at home and ensuring that they had the materials and the resources that would make that possible. So within the schools, the teachers were very busy in getting home learning packs ready and ensuring that pupils who needed it had the right IT equipment and working to ensure that the support system that schools provide for young people could be maintained even though we were all now working from home. Schools didn't close completely. Some schools have remained open and are there continuing to provide a learning environment for children of key workers, such as teachers and doctors and nurses. There have been many challenges associated with home learning, but one of the, the positive benefits is the way that our young people and, 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 and children are engaging with social media to be able to share pictures and videos of the work that they're doing at home. Many are working through Google Classrooms and it's great to be able to look at, at, at what they're achieving and what they're accomplishing. We know that it's not always straightforward for people working at home with children and elderly parents or elderly uh, family members to look after and care for. And so we have been trying to be very supportive for teachers in schools and for our own staff in the School of Education. One of the challenges that people are beginning to report for us now is a, a sense of isolation. And coupled with that, that sense of anxiety about what the future will bring and listening to news reports about how the world will, will, will no longer be the world as we know it. That what the new normal will be, will be one that will involve social distancing. So now we're trying to work through what that means for schools and what that means for universities as well. We're also trying to understand the implications for the assessment, for examinations, for stated examinations for admission into universities. And we're also looking to try and maintain and, 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 and strengthen the role that schools have played in supporting their local communities. And one of the impressive uh, actions of our local schools in, in the Glasgow context is the extent to which that has been realised right across the city and making sure that all our families feel cared for and feel provided for and are supported. So many challenges for our, our schools and our pupils, but equally many challenges for the teacher education system. And I'd like to turn to the second question that I was asked to respond to about um, what lessons uh, we can learn from, uh, from the recent situation. And one lesson I would say is that we've always spoken the language of partnership and enacted it, uh, but this is really underlying the importance for us to be working in partnership with our, our key uh, partners, such as General Teaching Council and our other teacher education providers, making decisions together and ensuring that whatever decisions we make around teacher education is, is the same across the education system in Scotland. And that was a really positive experience of trying to, to reach agreement on the situation where, for example, 
the universities closed and, and we still had students on placement in schools. So partnership has been an important element of it. It has also caused us to think and discuss at length about how we support beginning teachers who are about to enter the profession in September, but who will have had a very different experience in their teacher education programme. For example, one of our programmes, uh, the students were no longer able to undertake their, their final placement. As a university, we responded to that by putting in an alternative programme, drawing on the expertise of our own professors and members of staff, but also using highly skilled and highly expert practitioners to try and, and help students think through and reflect on and discuss their placement experiences. But that will never replace the, the, the experience of that third placement where the real growth as a teacher often happens. So that's caused us to think and discuss what we would do in terms of that induction year for teachers and whether or not that should be extended. So it's actually triggered some really interesting debates around the nature of teacher induction and teaching teacher support. One of the things I've been most impressed with um, is there's the actions of our staff and students in trying to support their local communities through this, this pandemic. Tremendous efforts right across the board. We were able to supply iPads to a local hospital um, so that pa patients could communicate with their families. Our technological education department has been producing visors for, for uh, personal protective, protective equipment. Um, our community development students have been working in the community, supporting uh, food shops and food banks and ensuring that those who need support are getting, getting that support. Really quite impressive. So although there have been challenges and there have been problems, it's been really quite encouraging and heartening to see the collective response of our staff and students, our teachers and our pupils right across the system. Finally, I'd like to end by wishing you well. I hope your families are well and I hope that they will continue to be well. It's been lovely to speak with you virtually through this, uh, this short video. I hope sometime we'll be able to meet again in person. Um, but I look forward to continuing to this global conversation uh, in different formats and wish you well with the for the rest of the conference. I echo the concern about current and future learning environment in extraordinary circumstances. Teachers were faced with the requirements for rapid shift online. The situation has evolved in distance learning in which institutions, teachers and students responded very diversely. Teachers were responsible for classroom management conducted online. Students were engaging in online classrooms from their homes with limited social environment. We soon realized we are facing digital divide of first order referring to technological infrastructure and of second order referring to digital competencies. Institutions have already before the crisis integrated online classrooms and online learning resources. To some extent, blended learning is in practice mostly is conducted on a level of teaching and learning methods, not so much at a program or a system level. Institutions, which had a higher level of inf informatization already conducted, were adopting the new situation more dynamically. In families, there were not sufficient equipment for children taking online classes every day. Actions were taken at local levels to support families with computers. When interviewing teachers, I could group issues that teachers address in three main categories. The first group of, group of issues refer to experiences and pedagogical competencies for online learning designs. This would include where to find and how to select online learning resources. Secondly, professional networking, peer teaching, and collaboration in designing of resources, materials. And the last and most important one is how to provide efficient feedback 
and individualization in teaching for proper care of each and everybody. Not to consider only cognitive learning domain, but also how to act on a relational and emotional level and how to support students who are not used to learn from isolation at home. The second group of issues refer to social classroom management and emotional social domain. Teachers were experiencing stress and burnout, frustration for vulnerability of children. Most importantly, also how to address emotional social domain when interacting, working online. And the third group of issues refer to equity and justice of educational system. Reg regarding your second question, you were asking which lessons were learned uh, from the side of us teachers educators. Envisioning the future of teaching and learning, more attention needs to be directed to educational technology. We are currently working in a cost project group consisting of large group of international teacher educators to foreground the need for good design practices in the shift to remote learning. And to conclude, the initial teacher education needs to prepare teachers for educational technology and digital competencies. When teaching them, this needs to be done in authentic practices and integrated across curriculum. Digital literacy could not be considered as autonomous literacy and to be taught a set of skills, tools and procedures which are then to be applied in a diverse context. I am very glad to take part at this year's IFTE Forum 2020, which is conducted in extraordinary circumstances. I am certain we will share our experiences and many discussions to find new solutions for the future of educational system. Dear Professor Gafuro, dear Rosa Valeyeva, dear colleagues from Russia, dear colleagues from Fra and White, participants of the sixth International Forum on Teacher Education in Kazan, Tatarstan. Today I'm speaking to you as the Managing Director of the Center for Teacher Education and Educational Research at TU Dresden, Germany. Thank you very much to be a part of your community for today and for the possibility to give you some information about the COVID-19 quarantine situation in Germany. After 65 days of isolation and be separated from our staff and our colleagues, um, now we reopen our university in the next 10 days. So we had at once to organize this isolation, this separation um, eight weeks before during one week. And I have to bring 100 people, 100 of my staff members uh, at distance for um, uh, at first we had to organize um, everything to bring our stuff out of the university. And then we start two weeks later our at distance learning. We do two things at first. Uh, we need to organize a good government uh, with uh, different crisis teams and we need a good governance to organize this at distance learning. The problem was that we don't have the experience with such uh, a large problem at once 
in the history of Germany. And you know that from all over the world, we have no uh, experience with such situation of isolation in such hard times of disruption of our lives in our countries. Since seven weeks now, we organize at TU Dresden and all over Germany at distance learning. So the university is closed since this time and we will reopen the university perhaps in the next 10 or 14 days. But only we open this in the university for the staff members, not for the seminars or the lectures. So it's for us, it's clear, it will be an at distance learning semester all over Germany. Dear Aida, you asked me what problems did the teachers, pupils and parents face in your country during the COVID quarantine? Hmm. Very difficult to answer about this. We could say many things, but I think the largest problem was um, to be separated and isolated. The parents uh, has their has to work with their children um, at home. The teachers were separated at home, and the schools are closed. And so we have no like it is since 200 years, no meeting points. So we have to organize a new school situation. This is very the largest problem, I think, in this moment for the last weeks. Now we reopen um, uh, the schools step by step. Um, at first, the 10th graders, the 8th graders, and at least um, the primary schools. Usually in Germany, the schools were not prepared for this situation. Many of the students don't have computers at home. Many rectors has problems to uh, bring the staff members together to organize this uh, at distance learning. Some of the um, parents had problems with their working situation. They also be separated. They need usually their computers. They also, the students, the pupils need their computers. And uh, often, we had many problems with the Wi-Fi at home. So um, it was not uh, so easy to bring the homework and what's to do from the teachers to the pupils. I think this is the be separated and bring the homework and what's to do for the work uh, every day to the schools. We got different ideas about this. Um, the teachers often bring the homework to the school and then the parents go there and take uh, the homework at home. So usually there's not uh, a contact by computer, usually only by telephone. Okay, by the 10th graders and so on, when the pupils are older, then uh, they are better prepared because they have their own computers, they know what's going on and so on and so on. So I think, so I think at first it's this isolation as a problem. And also um, now the parents could see what's going on sometimes in school with their children. So it's a new impression about the children, about learning, and also about a distance learning with their uh, children at home. Also, it's a new contact for the uh, teachers to come together uh, with the parents um, by telephone. Now we will reopen 
our schools step by step. And so what will we bring in this new situation? I think we will learn that it is necessary to have enough uh, technical uh, opportunities to come together in an isolated situation. And it's a very large, very strong learning curve, curve from teachers, from pupils, and also from parents. Also, you ask what lessons should the teacher education system in your country learn from the situation? Also a very different um, question. Perhaps we can learn that it is possible uh, to organize at distance learning um, during one or two uh, weeks when we have such a uh, situation of pressure. For the universities, it's not such a large problem. Uh, everywhere we have at uh, distance learning, we have the opportunities, we have the staff members and so on. It's not like in schools. And for teacher education, we learn it is very strong work to organize this uh, at distance learning. We have much more, we need much more time to organize our lectures and lessons. And sometimes the students said we get an overload um, of information. So I think we need a good government to organize such a situation and also we have to organize a good governance about this situation. And then it will be possible to bring the students at a distance. For the moment, we could not imagine what this COVID-19 quarantine, quarantine will bring us in teacher education for the future. Perhaps there will be a discussion about teacher education in a new way. Perhaps you can see this in several countries. I've heard from colleagues uh, from different countries that some uh, politicians perhaps will say that we can close several, uh, not universities, but perhaps faculties and so on, and give the learning situation to some professors who are sitting at home and organize the lectures from home or one strong university. I think we will get this new situation, but we must fight against this situation because we need in teacher education the contact between our students and, um, and our professors and the staff members. And also, it is not possible to organize the practice, the practicum, um, by uh, computer. Uh, we have to bring the students in schools to learn what's going on there. And it is, not, it is not possible to separate. So perhaps we will uh, see in the next years what's going on. At least I will say thank you very much uh, to hear something uh, about Germany. I think we will be with our families again. We will be with our friends again, and we will meet again in the next time. And uh, stay healthy. Best wishes to Tatarstan and Kavan. Thank you very much, uh, Ida and colleagues. Best wishes for your um, uh, international forum. So, thank you very much. Better days will come.
Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear forum participants, my name is Victoria Iskru. I'm a research associate at Kazan Federal University. Last year I graduated from the University of Southampton and I majored in education and my thesis topic was devoted to online learning and teaching with a focus on online pedagogies. Today I continue my inquiry in technology-mediated learning with uh, the support of Dr. John Schultz from Southampton University. I pursue a research project on video-based learning. Here I'd like to recap on some important points made by the forum honored guests and accomplished delegates. We asked them to comment on the problems that teachers faced amidst the current pandemic situation, as well as the lessons that should be learned from this experience. So to flag up a few headlines made to question one, what problems do students and teachers face during the quarantine, I'd like to open with the widespread concern about the impact of school closures on families. As the lockdown was confirmed and schools were largely closed, the issue of digital divide has come to light. We can't assume that every child has access to the technology. Some households don't have access to the necessary equipment. Handheld devices are not quite adequate for educational purposes and parents have to learn ICT on the fly as they now assume the role of the teacher. There is also concern that the impact of students' progress will vary. Most students are working on educational resources being sent by schools and the effectiveness of that hasn't been systematically monitored or evaluated. In some countries, all public examinations have been cancelled or alternative arrangements for assessing children are being put into place. The next point made evident is the fact that society is putting quite a load on schools and teachers. While schools have always been a hub of activity for society, everything that the school offers is now coming to light. The respect for teachers, for all frontline workers and all the people who have been working hard in the background, supporting families, all of a sudden all these workers who happen to be behind the scene are now coming forth and people are seeing it. As to what we are learning from the coronavirus, there is a need for more scenario planning by regulatory authorities in order to prepare for unexpected events just like the one we had found ourselves in. There is a need for rapid and effective communication system between providers, schools, trainees and students to minimize confusion, anxiety and panic. It's vital to attach importance to virtual learning environments that are there to ensure access to appropriate technologies. Consideration should be also given as to how to support the ongoing professional development of newly qualified teachers. I'd like to conclude by saying that our experience of the coronavirus uh, and the quarantine has been different, but as it was righteously noticed, it all comes from the same starting point. We have all lost our certainties. Visual cues and pedagogical cues are gone. So, as the effect of pandemic accelerated, the issue of adaptability of both teachers and students has been widely raised. Even though we can no longer presume that all of the teaching can be face-to-face, -face, this is not about a new normal. We have to learn a lot from this very rapid transition. It's important to talk, to take from the experience of one another. We need to make sense of what to do in order to prepare for and better navigate the more blended work. That would involve focusing on skills and capabilities of teachers and students alike. By doing that, we would have a much richer experience. That's something that we will all learn from and hopefully meet some of the challenges. COVID-19 has put a lot on the test. And this has been an opportunity to explore the potential of online tools at all educational levels. After the pandemic distance, learning might gain momentum and strengthen its, pre its presence in all educational institutes, 
So now it's about time to reinvent ourselves. Holistic plan and collaboration are required more than ever. We invite everybody to close collaboration and the departure point on this trajectory will be the virtual forum IFTE 2020.